As the United States moves towards another recession, Walmart's empire is silently crumbling down. When you are the world's biggest retailer, even a 1% drop in earnings can be translated into billions of dollars in losses. But profits are down by almost a quarter compared to a year ago, which means that the big box retailers' woes are far worse than anyone would have imagined. For decades, Walmart was the company competitors feared most, but new numbers show that the retailer has been falling behind in recent years. Walmart has begun to lose popularity amongst consumers and major holes are starting to form in its business. For the most part, the company has hidden its financial struggles from the headlines because the problems it faces are different across the world, which allows the superstore chain to mask itself in the overall picture. But as Motley Fool's Travis Hoyam noted, when we dig between the lines, we can rapidly see a company in serious trouble and could be the latest in a long line of leading retailers to go from boom to bust in the blink of an eye. That's why in today's video, we have compiled a series of numbers, facts, and stats that prove that Walmart's best days are behind it. Before checking this list, please support us with a thumbs up in this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Without further ado, here are 20 signs Walmart is falling apart before our eyes. 1. The world's biggest retailer, which is the country's largest grocer, recently shared an ominous sales outlook for the final quarter of 2022. In a September 29th announcement, Walmart said it is bracing for a sizable decline in its profit margins as the rising cost of everyday necessities eat up more of household budgets and leave shoppers with less money to spend on items they want, such as new clothing. The company will have to slash prices on a wide range of items to get rid of merchandise that isn't selling, hurting its bottom line during the busiest shopping season of the year. 2. Walmart also announced that it expects adjusted earnings per share to fall 9% in this quarter and between 13% compared to the same time a year ago, further highlighting its latest financial troubles. 3. After the announcement, the market reacted accordingly, sending Walmart shares down by 8% in a single day. And even though it managed to climb back up in the past few days, it remains near the lows of a consolidation pattern. 4. Right now, Walmart stock is still below its 50-day moving average, which indicates it's still struggling. It also remains mired beneath the longer-term 200-day moving average. 5. Its recent poor performance in the market wasn't the worst downturn it has experienced this year. In fact, in May, shares of the superstore chain suffered their steepest one-day decline ever, falling 11.7% in a single day. After it released its first earnings report, it became clear that its first quarter was exceptionally weak. Investors expected the retailer to report a $1.48 per share profit, but Walmart instead reported a $1.30 per share. 6. According to Gap Data, the retail giant reported a 24% year-over-year decline in profit per diluted share. Needless to say, investors are not happy. 7. The news gets worse. Profits, it turns out, are the least of Walmart's problems. The retailer didn't generate any cash from operations at all this past quarter, instead consuming $3.8 billion. Add in $3.5 billion in capital spending, and Walmart's free cash flow for quarter three was a dishearteningly negative $7.3 billion. And the company 
hadn't experienced negative cash from operations since quarter three, 1995. That's more than a quarter century ago, according to historical data provided by S&P Global Market Intelligence. Eight, and more financial losses may be coming for Walmart. The IBD stock checkup shows that earnings have actually fallen by an average of 4.5% over the past three quarters. This is well short of the 25% growth sought by investors. Over the past three years, the retail chain's monthly sales have grown by an average of 10%. That's why its projected 4% sales growth for the final quarter of 2022 seems so unimpressive. In other words, investors are seeing Walmart stock as a no-buy right now. 9. Last month, during a post-earnings conference call, executives noted that the company is facing a lack of cash flow, and that was primarily caused because it heavily spent to build inventory in the first two quarters of the year, and the cost of its inventory was further elevated due to inflation. The big issue was the fact that the more expensive items it purchased this year are simply not selling at the pace the company expected, and now they have a massive inventory glut. That's why Walmart has been canceling a huge number of orders in recent months. John David Rainey, the company's EVP and CFO, said that the retailer was reducing exposure in electronics, home, and sporting goods, and canceled billions of dollars in orders to realign inventories. 10. The retail titan knows how much its low prices are important to its customers. But still, the company just issued an alarming warning for customers everywhere. On the food side, we're seeing double-digit inflation, and I'm concerned that that inflation may continue to increase. CEO Doug McMillan said, Walmart's grocery prices already rose 21% between July 2019 and July 2022. No wonder why consumers are shopping less at the superstore chain. 11. In fact, over the past couple of years, Walmart has been losing price wars with its other competitors. For the longest time, price wars used to be the big box retailer's game. The company was so good at this, it had a reputation for driving mom and pop stores out of business. At its peak, it was the undisputed leader in low prices. However, today, the battle is not so easy. The income statement of Walmart is full of real estate-related expenses for its big box stores. On the other hand, e-commerce retailers don't have to deal with those expenses since they run their entire business from the virtual world. Walmart is steadily losing its edge as far as lower pricing is concerned. And that is one of the things that used to define the company. 12. Goldman Sachs analysts highlight that Walmart supercenters are particularly struggling as consumers increasingly choose convenience stores over one-stop shops. The retail giant's mega stores suffered a 3% same store sales decline in the third quarter compared with last year. During the same period, foot traffic for Walmart's US stores fell by 2.1%. I think convenience is where the consumers have been looking, especially if you look at the baby boomers, CFO Charles Harley said. U.S. consumers appear more focused on some combination of value and convenience. Goldman Sachs analysts wrote in a recent research note predicting the slow decline of big box retailers like Walmart and Target. 13. One thing many people don't know is the fact that Walmart is the largest employer in the United States. But even as we approach the all-important holiday season, the retailer is cooling off on recruiting. Walmart's seasonal hiring total is down 73% from last year, adding only 40,000 seasonal staff members compared to the same time in 2021 when the company added 150,000 mostly permanent and full-time associates, as well as 20,000 supply chain workers. That is yet another sign of corporate America preparing for a deep recession. 14. In August, 
Walmart said that major layoffs were necessary for the company's future. In a single month, it reportedly laid off approximately 200 of its corporate employees amid growing concerns over inflation and sagging customer spending. In a statement, the company said inflationary prices reflecting supply chain problems and storage costs associated with a backlog of shipping containers were also forcing the retailer to find more ways to reduce costs. 15. Truth be told, Walmart's supply chain is a mess. The retailer's operations were built to keep the inventory of its mega stores full of products. They are the leaders in mass transportation and obtaining bulk discounts. But when it comes to schedule reliability and on-time deliveries, the company disappoints. The logistics involving supply chains are now about supplying individual products to the consumer's doorstep at the lowest possible cost. This is where e-commerce retailers have the lead over Walmart. Customers have also complained about many illogical issues with Walmart. For example, when shoppers order multiple products with Amazon, they get them at the same time in the same packet. However, when a bunch of products is ordered from Walmart, they arrive at different times, making it inconvenient for the customer. 16. If things were going well for the retail giant, they wouldn't have permanently shuttered 160 stores across 27 states in the past two years. The closures led to mass layoffs of over 10,000 employees. The states hit the hardest were Texas with 29 closings, North Carolina with 17, and 11 in Arkansas. 17. On top of that, the retailer temporarily closed hundreds of stores in the past few weeks. So, if you notice that your local Walmart is closed, that's why. As of September the 30th, the big box retailer's website indicated that there are at least 240 stores currently closed throughout the U.S. with no set date to reopen. Some of the facilities were facing product and personnel shortages, while others have been affected by Hurricane Ian, which caused inventory losses of an estimated $6 million, and that's just in the state of Florida. 18. Globally, the retail chain is closing 269 stores as it exits the Walmart Express pilot program. 95% of those being closed are within 10 miles of another Walmart. Closing stores is never an easy decision, but it is necessary to keep the company strong and positioned for the future, CEO Doug McMillan said. The closings will begin at the end of the month and will affect 16 thousand workers. They are set to cut down the company's global revenue, given that shuttered doors mean money that isn't being made. 19. With all that said, it's becoming increasingly evident that Walmart's empire is slowly crumbling down. In fact, Walmart may lose its position as U.S.'s largest retailer in 2020. According to J.P. Morgan, Amazon is on track to overtake Walmart this year as the nation's best-performing company. Amazon's U.S. Gross Merchandise Volume, or GMV, and that's a closely watched industry metric used to measure the total value of goods sold over a certain time period, has grown significantly faster than both U.S. adjusted retail sales and U.S. e-commerce, the analyst said. J.P. Morgan analyst said Amazon's GMV in 2022 climbed 41% year over year, while Walmart's GMV is estimated to have grown 10% year over year in 2020. Based on current estimates, we believe Amazon could surpass Walmart to become the largest U.S. retailer in 2022, J.P. Morgan analysts Christopher Horvath and Doug Anmuth wrote. And 20. All of these numbers expose that the world's largest retailer's foundation may not be on solid ground anymore. However, that's not the whole story. Walmart is the thermometer of the American economy. The entire organization is focused on nothing but selling goods and services to Americans. 
Although it may be an empire in decline, it still sells a huge volume of merchandise every day. When Walmart misses estimates, it can only mean one of two things. Either Walmart or the American economy is weaker than anyone thought, or maybe both things at the same time. Walmart is a terrific operator. They didn't suddenly become stupid, argues Howard Davidowitz, one of the top retail minds in the country. The economy is in collapse. That's what's going on right now. Either the best merchants in America forgot how to sell, Americans stopped consuming, or the economy is turning south, not getting better. Davidovitz outlines, noting that, unfortunately, as we enter another recession, there's nothing the government or industry executives can do about it. We've spent all the money, we've borrowed all the money, and we're in the tank, the expert added. Simply put, as the U.S. consumer goes broke, so does the biggest retail business in the entire market. Walmart's traditional business model is showing persistent signs of weakness both in the U.S. and overseas. If the retail giant fails to adapt to new market trends, e-commerce competitors may crush the Walmart and push it to a downward spiral we've seen so many other retailers go down in recent years. Will the biggest retailer in the scene be a victim of the relentless retail apocalypse? That is yet to be seen, but the outlook certainly is not promising right now. And the last earnings report was a train wreck that resulted in major losses right after the retail chain experienced a pretty bad losing streak. At the end of the day, the company's demise is a mere reflection of a collapsing economy. And what we've seen so far is just the beginning of a series of defeats that lie ahead for Walmart, American consumers, and our entire economy. Thank you for watching. We look forward to your comments under this video and please subscribe to our channel.